Parker Bowden the third is going to get a re-rack in a monumental situation. The qualifying, the match play, getting into this new venue, and history is on the line. Yeah, and it's all coming down to this one shot. I mean, a strike here and pretty much hand him the trophy. You got to figure Parker can manage seven pins and two balls if he strikes. Bone qualified at fifth after nine games, defeating Tom Baker, fellow Hall of Famer, in the round of 16, and Wayne Garber in the round of eight for the win. Bone drops the Hall of Fame hammer. Not only is he a great guy, but he's one of the greatest to ever throw a bowling ball. Listen. Woo! Yeah, yeah! It's enough. Parker Bone, PBA Cheetah champion, and the Bones will join him with Kimberly Laneside when we return to the Kingpin Club. Number four. Jason Belmonte, now a spectator, and soon to join Earl Anthony. Hey, you can you can change that number. Weber with look Giannis out! Whoa! He's going to take nine spare and go quietly. <laughs> Absolutely. Pete's in the 220s already. Best Belmonte can shoot is 189. It's over. What a performance by Pete Weber. And Earl Anthony makes some room. Pete Weber has joined the greatest ever atop the list of PBA major victories with 10. PDW continues to amaze. There's the spare ball. Wife Tracy loving it. Pete Weber making history in Indianapolis. How about the last two titles for Pete Weber? U.S. Open Tournament of Champions. This man came to win the title. This man won the title. He was on all week long, and the Indianapolis bowling fans show their respect for who Nelson Burton Jr. says might be one of the greatest ever to bowl. The third time you've done it. Two weeks, this 54 year old Hall of Famer has picked up two more titles, and now only three players in the history of the PBA Tour have 40 or greater. The other two are Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Earl Anthony, and now Norm Duke with number 40. First time he's gone back to back, right, in singles titles? Well, he kind of did over two calendar years, but it, it, first time since. I believe 2013, or excuse me, 2011 that he won from the number one seed, and that was the U.S. Open against Mika Koivuniemi. It hit something. No, no problem, Norm. Pins are listening to you. The bowling balls are listening to you. And you are a champion yet again. Close, tenacious battle. Anthony on a spare in the ninth, up in the tenth, as Slacker looks down. He's he there. Runs it up. Oh, and a solid ten. I don't believe it. That would just not budge, and nothing came close to moving that ten pin out of there. 
What a bad break. The three pin. Earl holds up the white flag. You see that? Watch the three pin. Third one from the right. Go to the wall fast, so fast that it comes back and misses the 10. He could not have thrown the ball any better under the pressure situation, but he needs to get together, make the spare. He's still Four skill to double. Now let's remember now. All right, Slaker's on a strike in the ninth. All right, here's Anthony. Picking up the spare, and he'll have one more ball, and he'll try to get every pin he possibly can knock down. Right, Chuck? Eight pins is very important here, so well, no four seven, skill. Eight, yeah, eight pins, and he forces, well, seven, eight, or nine, and he forces Gill to get two strikes. two strikes. So let's just watch this last shot of the 1984 Masters Tournament. It might be the last shot this man throws until the Masters begins next year. Except for Lee, yeah. Now it carries. Earl waves at it and says, why didn't you do that earlier? 191 for Earl Anthony in the championship match. That's what he's been doing, bowling just well enough to beat his opposition all through this tournament. Again, Mike. This one, he just needs seven, and he gets ten. Who was high. A little bit high, but he, he was going to get seven or eight on that spare. Right now, Gil needs, he has not hit the pocket on this one in the entire game. He doesn't have a strike. He needs two it. more strikes. Have to do it one at a time. He needs his first one. And Frank. He gave it a lot of room. It's not coming back. Earl Anthony, ladies and gentlemen, has scored an incredible comeback. And yeah, there you see the Earl with his wife Susie, Susie. Jim Dressel, just off camera from the Bowlers Journal. Give me one! I did not go to the sports book last night. Look at this, 13 of 14. 14 of 15. Get the engraver out and about and get ready for Walter A. Williams Jr. to take another title. Yeah, and he, he pro he's proving that it's just not enough to be able to hit the pocket out here. Nine in a row and blowing up the rack. And here's the advantage that Walter Ray had today. Only had to deal with one right-hander. That was Chris Barnes. And he didn't see Chris until the title match. Not a lot of transition to go through. That wasn't very good. And he was able to play the extreme outside part of the lane, which is his bread and butter. He's made a fortune playing out there. And he's at his best when he's out there. And he's proving it right here today. And going for the Bo Derrick. Perfect 10. <laughs> this will be Walter Ray's eighth major victory, now tied for second most with Mike Albee and Pete Weber, trailing only the late great Earl Anthony. At 10, and in two weeks, Walter Ray's got a shot for number nine when the U.S. Open heads to Indianapolis. What a performance. A 2-9-0 from Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Title number 47, major number 8. Yeah, baby. Whew.